happy What Should I Do Wednesday! I'm so excited to be back bringing you another episode of What Should I Do Wednesday where I answer all of your general paranormal related questions that you ask me all up in the Facebook. And boy, did you ask me some good ones this week. I got flooded yesterday and today and I cannot wait to get started because these are really good questions and I can tell that I have a lot to say about all of them and I want to keep it as short as possible so we're going to get right into it. Okay? Okay. Here we go. Our first question is from Theodore Shrechurek. Nailed it, failed it, you let me know. How can you tell if someone or something attached to you is a loved one or someone random? That's a really good but loaded question. You really need to start at the beginning. When did this start? Did this start when you were little? Is this something you've always had? Or did you have like a near-death experience and then the activity started? Did you buy a piece of furniture at grandma's estate sale and then the activity started? Did you buy a piece of furniture at some random estate sale and then the activity started? You Knowing the source of the activity is the most important thing because then you can kind of maybe put some puzzle pieces together. Going back, if you had a near-death experience, you saw the light, you got pulled from the light, you could have brought someone or something back with you, that wasn't intended, it's called a hitchhiker, it happens. Um, they came back with you because they have unfinished business here or you reminded them of someone and they felt safe. Obviously that's someone random. You don't know them, you don't know why, but they're just here. If you bought a piece of furniture, say grandma's dresser, grandma's estate sale, grandma just passed away, and grandma, that was grandma's favorite dresser, and then chances are it's grandma. Um, I'm a firm believer in guardian angels. They watch over you and protect you and remind you and when you're being an idiot and knock sense into you and sometimes even make the best decisions in your life for you. And I know I have one and it's a great feeling to have. And so I'm not really worried about that attachment. He can stay as long as he wants. He's fully welcome and he knows that. But I know that some attachments can be bad and scary and so really try to pinpoint the activity where it started and where it came from and then once you kind of know that basic foundation you can kind of put the pieces together and maybe figure it out and if you can't figure it out it doesn't make sense chances are it's somebody random and if it makes perfect sense then chances are it's somebody that you know and love good question though our next question is from our very own Walter Roswell. He's no longer a stalker. He has been promoted. He's gonna brag about it, I'm sure, but I love him and he knows it. So our next, his question is, what is the scariest personal experience you have had that you can share? I've had a couple, but the one that I really feel comfortable for sh in sharing is from the time I was probably, 15 to 18, I had this reoccurring dream of me being out, like almost like an out-of-body experience, looking at myself sleeping in my room, and there was this black mass over me, and the black mass would just like envelop me as I was sleeping. I would always be face down in the pillow, like not face like on my stomach asleep, but face down in the pillow, and he would, like, this mass would push on the back of my head, keep me face down in the pillow to where I could not breathe, could not scream, could not think straight, and I would watch myself like run and scream and tear hell trying to get away from this thing. And I would get to the point where I could not breathe and I would feel myself like physically not being able to breathe. My chest would get tight. And about the time like the room would start to spin, I would wake up. And it was like that a couple of nights a week, solid for probably two or three years. And it was just really scary. I didn't know what it meant. I didn't know why. And then I got to kind of looking at my life at that point and I was going through some really, really, really hard stuff. And I have now since learned that also during that time, I was experiencing these, these things called night terrors. I had never heard of them before. I knew what nightmares were. I knew what bad dreams were. I had no idea what the heck a night terror was. And my parents kind of like at their wits end finally took me to like my doctor because they didn't know what was going on and they were the first ones to mention night terrors which is essentially just like your deepest level of fear possible to the point where you can't even wrap your brain around it and you just kind of get lost in your fear and your body can manifest and do some wacky wacky things like 
You can threat right around and like almost like you're seizing. You scream and cry and panic. You can throw yourself out of bed. They're really dangerous. And the worst thing you can do is wake someone up from a night terror because if you wake them up and they're still like on that level of, oh my God, what's going on? They can hurt you. And so you're helpless. You have to watch them. They can last anywhere from like 10 minutes to 45 minutes. And there was nothing anybody could do. They, they gave me medication to help me sleep and it kind of toned it down, but it was still pretty consistent. And they said they're most commonly, surprise, surprise, stress related, which I at the time had tons of. So it was one of those situations where it was just a really rough time in my life. And I think my body was manifesting um, through these night terrors and this dream was maybe just a part of that because as soon as the stress died down, the dreams went away, the night terrors subsided. I still suffer from them time to time, but they're not nearly as bad as they used to be. And I'm just really glad that that chapter in my life is over because let me tell you, it is no fun waking up on the floor with like a bloody nose, not knowing what the hell's going on or where you are and wondering why you're on the floor with a bloody nose. It's not a good time trying to decipher that crazy train. So that was my most frightening experience by far. Moving on. Our next question is from Susan Clark Fitzpatrick and her question is why do spirits or ghosts manifest as orbs or mists? I think it boils down to energy and it's all they've really got. Your living body isn't here anymore and so you kind of have to, if you're, if you're earthbound, if you're stuck here, you kind of have to make do with what you got. And I think our bodies and our souls are just made up of all this energy. Our energy manifests into mists or orbs depending on how much energy we have within our spirit and how much we can gather from the living and whatever way that we can manifest is the way that they do. And so, you know, I think the, the orbs are balls of light and that you can see and it makes them a little bit more easier to spot than maybe a mist, but I think a mist is maybe harder to do. And so it's just one of those situations of how much energy they can have. And um, I think it's really just all they have. They cannot physically turn themselves back into an earthly human body with beat, with bones and organs and so I think it's just simply their soul and simply their spirit still here on earth and they're using everything they can and it's just their way of letting us know that they're here it's like here you can see a mist you know that's me or you can see an orb and you know that's me I can't talk to you and I can't do these things to you because I don't have the energy to do that but this is what I can give you and so maybe it's just a way of letting them know letting us know that they are here <sighs> moving on good question though that's a good one from Christina Brown, I, rem I was wondering if spirits remember you if you were a child living in a haunted house and come back one day as an adult. I think this is a fantastic question and I think it's really possible. It depends on the spirit there and if it's the same spirit, um, if the spirit has evolved or changed in any way and if you've evolved and changed in any way, make yourself completely unrecognizable to them. And so I think if you're recognizable to them in any sort, they're gonna assume that it's the same person. I think they really look, I don't think they look so much at your physical body as they do so much your spirit and your heart and your in your mind and so, and your soul. So I think that they really look internally into you and if they connect to the person that they connected to when you were a child, I believe it's highly possible. Now, if you're going into a location, um, you know, into an old, an old location, an old home that's been renovated or things like that, there's new spirits that could have popped up, there's new things that could have happened and you could look like a threat. And so it's kind of a fine line, but I do think it's completely and totally possible. But you know me, I believe anything's possible. So our next question is from our very own Chris Nelson. Hi, Chris. For people starting out doing investigations, what should be their first piece of equipment? Hands down, keep it simple. A little digital recorder, a little camera, no big thing, don't go crazy. There's no sense of dropping like a bajillion dollars on all this high-tech equipment when you're an amateur and you're kind of getting your paranormal legs and you really haven't done this a lot or ever. Um, take a camera, take your phone. A lot of smartphones have great, you know, recorders or apps or anything like that. Um, Take a camera with some night vision, then you have, you know, you can capture it on camera, you have a digital recorder to capture, capture EVPs, and at the end of the day, that's the best thing that you can do to start out with, and it's keeping it easy, keeping it simple, not really getting too high tech, don't go cray cray, good old camera, good digital recorder, and you should have a good time. Okay? Okay. Our last question is from another one of our wonderful admins, Terry Woodruff. As an 
empath, I get bad vibes from looking at some people's pics and I get drained of my energy. What can I do to prevent this from happening? You and me both, brother, you and me both. As I've learned probably in the last few weeks, my empath abilities are a little bit stronger than I've been giving myself credit for or been open to and I've really opened myself up to that and I've learned to really get a sense of people and connect with people on such a deep and powerful and yes draining level but it's been so amazing and so I get the same way I'm really starting to learn and the very first time I experienced that was last week when I watched an episode of Ghost Adventures and that bat shit cray cray lady girlfriend of his was all up on the TV chilling me to the core over here so and all I had to do was look at her she didn't even speak um so I feel your pain I get it I'm learning it is draining and it's exhaustive because you're dealing with everybody else's emotions all at once and sometimes you all you need to deal with is your own and that is so hard and you just want to slink into yourself like this and make it all go away because it's just too much but I think the best way to do this and I'm kind of starting to learn how to do this um, with the help of one of our wonderful other admins Darla and her husband Chris and they are kind of really teaching us how to shield ourselves from all of that like bombarding energy just relaxing yourself and keeping yourself warm and calm and just really shielding yourself from the from the environment because it as I've learned is emotionally like a slap in the face sometimes and you just fall over from exhaustion and so I think the best thing to do is just continue to practice your shielding and practice building up that that wall of armor that can kind of keep you from taking on everybody else's emotions and being able to focus on your own and then also being able to have the energy to help someone when they really need it. And so the best thing to do is just keep calm, carry on, build up that shield and just stay warm and relaxed and full of love and happiness and everything will be a-okay. But that is all I have for What Should I Do Wednesday. And before I go, I wanna make an announcement. now. Some of you guys know that on the weekends it gets a little cray cray on the page. We all get relaxed and we have a little fun and we are all adults so we may be popping bottles and we have been doing this kind of like fun house thing or pick up scary house and it was getting to the point where it was getting a little inappropriate. We like to keep it clean and calm and family friendly here. And I know we are all like grown ass people and we have dirty, dirty minds, but we have decided, or Terry has decided that we are gonna continue the fun house, but with some strict rules and we're here to lay them out for you and kind of let you know what's coming. We're gonna be doing this at the house on Saturdays. It's gonna be a fun house. We wanna keep it paranormal related. Somebody start with the story, stick to the story. People can get captured by spirits and then we find you and then whatever. We can have fun. There can be roller coasters in it. You can be dancing in the club, but keep your clothes on, people. You know, we don't need popping bottles and, and making it raunchy and dirty. And like I said, I know we're all adults and I hate preaching, but we have a purpose here and that is so that everybody can enjoy it. And there's some people who don't like that. There's some people who are just like, really, really? So we're gonna be doing it on Saturday nights. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Keep it paranormal, keep it clean. You know, we don't need raunchiness. You know, yeah, it's fine to have a drink and we're drunk and we're dancing and we're having a good time and oh, we're having, you know, this and that, but keep a point to it and keep it something that we can be proud of. We're getting bigger every day. We have big dreams for this page, or at least I do. Um, like I said, Paracon. Um, and I don't want anything to jeopardize that. And so, and I know that you guys don't either. And so we want you to have fun. That is the point. We want you to make friends. That is the point. We want you to have a great time. Again, the point. Keep it clean. You know how to keep it clean. Keep it friendly and something that everybody would want to partake in and enjoy. And as long as you do that, we will keep bringing it to you. But if it gets out of hand, we will cut it off. But that's all I have for this week. I will be back on Friday for GA Flashback Friday. Until then, stay happy, stay healthy, stay warm. Much love and hugs.